What's up everybody, welcome to another video and I hope you're ready to flex those brain muscles. If you're anything like me, then you don't like to just be given formulas and procedures and told to use them and apply them without having at least some understanding of where these things came from, right? Where did this formula come from? Why does this procedure work? Those are questions that I constantly ask myself and if you're the same way, then this video may be of interest to you because what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at this standard form of a quadratic equation and we're gonna solve it for x. And what that's actually gonna give us is what we call the quadratic formula. So really we're gonna derive the quadratic formula. And it turns out that this really doesn't require a whole lot of prerequisite knowledge. You need to know something called completing the square and if you need to review that, I'll link a video above right now. So we need to know how to complete the square and then some basic understanding of algebra, right? Square roots, how to manipulate expressions and equations. But other than that, there's nothing crazy that we need to know in order to derive this quadratic formula on our own. So let's go ahead and try to do it. We're gonna solve for X using the process of completing the square. That pretty much summarizes what we're gonna do through this whole process. Solve for x by completing the square. So that's what we're gonna do, okay? So we're gonna write out ax squared plus bx. And what's our first step with completing the square? That's subtract c from both sides, right? We typically wanna group all the x terms together on one side and everything else on the other side. So let's go ahead and write this out. And now what we need is we really want this x squared coefficient to be one. We need that in order to successfully complete the square. So in order to get that, we need to divide both sides of this equation by a, okay? So that leaves us with x squared plus b over a x equals negative c over a. Okay, so now we got our leading coefficient to be one, we're in good shape. So this next step is when we add something to both sides of this equation that gives us that perfect square trinomial on the left-hand side. And the thing that we add, if you remember it, we look at the b term, which in this case is b over a. We take half of that, which in this case is b over 2a, and we square it. And that's what we add to both sides, is 1 half b squared. So let's see, 1 half of b is b over 2a. And what is this squared? Well, we square the b, we square the 2, that's 4. We square the a, and what we end up with is b squared over 4a squared. This is what we're going to add to both sides of this equation, and it's going to give us that perfect square trinomial on the left-hand side. So let's see if this works. b over a x plus b squared over 4a squared. So that's the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, we have negative c over a plus that b squared over for a squared, okay? So now we can factor this, right, into a binomial squared because this is now a perfect square trinomial. So this factors, and I will give a suggestion for this. What always ends up in here is that one half b, right? The b term here, the coefficient of the x, when we take one half of that before we square it, that's always what ends up in here, b over two a. And that's throughout any time you're completing the square. That's always what ends up there. So you don't need to get to this and then try to factor it on your own and think about, okay, what multiplies to be this and adds to be this. You don't need to do that. You can just write that one half of B right in here, which is B over 2A squared, okay? And if we want to check our answer, we can FOIL this out and we should get exactly back to where we were in the line above it. And it turns out we do, but if you want to double check me, I encourage you to. It's always good to be skeptical. All right, then I'm just gonna copy down what we have here on the right-hand side. Now let's think about what we can do next. Well, we can square root both sides, but I think before we do that, I'm gonna find a common denominator here on the left-hand side and combine these into one term. It looks relatively easy to do. I can take this fraction and multiply it by 4a over 4a, right? If I do that, I get negative 4ac on the top, and on the bottom I get 4a squared, and then I can write these under the same denominator, and it should make my life a little bit easier. So before I take the square root of both sides, I'm gonna copy down this x plus b over 2a squared. I'm gonna combine these two by finding a common denominator. So remember, 4a over 4a, so I get negative 
4ac plus b squared over 4a squared. Sorry I'm having to write these close together. I'm worried that I'm going to run out of room toward the end, so I'm trying to write a little bit smaller now. All right, so now we can definitely square root both sides, right? Remember, when we square root both sides of an equation like this, we need that plus or minus in there. So we can square root both sides, and that gets rid of this square. And what we're left with is plus or minus the square root of negative 4ac. And actually, I'm going to switch this order around and write this as b squared minus 4ac. That should sound really familiar, by the way. I think we're on the right track because that sounds really familiar. I think that's what we call the discriminant b squared minus 4ac, and this is over 4a squared. So let's see, what do I want to do next? Well, if I subtract this from both sides, I'm technically done. I've solved for x, right? But what I can also do is simplify this a little bit. Okay, we can actually simplify this. And how we can do that is using a property of square roots. We know that if we have the square root of a fraction like this, the square root of x over y, we can split that up into the square root of x divided by the square root of y. That's exactly what we can do here. And the reason why we want to do this is because we actually know the square root of 4a squared. That's 2a. Okay, so that's one reason is we can easily take the square root of this denominator. The second reason, probably the most, more important one, is that that means when we subtract this over, we're going to have b over 2a, and we're going to have the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a, common denominator. So then we can combine those over the same denominator, and it simplifies it a little bit more. So those are kind of the two reasons we want to do this. So let's go ahead and separate those. So this is going to be x. Uh, let's see. I'll start by just separating them. And then the very last step, I will subtract this over. So this equals plus or minus, and I have a fraction here, and then the numerator is this b squared minus 4ac, and then the denominator is that 2a, okay? So hopefully that makes sense and it's not scrunching up too much, but my last step here is to subtract this from both sides. And instead of writing minus at the end, I'm gonna write it as negative out in front, right? So we're gonna have negative b over 2a plus or minus this. And since they have the same denominator, I'm gonna go ahead and combine them. So I'm gonna do both of those in the same step. Subtract and combine, okay? And that leaves me with negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four a, C, and this is all over the same denominator, which is 2a, and that is what we call the quadratic formula, and we just derived it pretty much just by taking the standard form of a quadratic equation and completing the square. So I wanted to show you that this is something that you're capable of not only understanding, but probably doing on your own, and now you see exactly where the quadratic formula comes from, which maybe gives you a little bit of satisfaction when you're using it, knowing, hey, I know where this comes from. Maybe it doesn't, maybe you don't care, I don't know. But hope you got something out of this video. If you did, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. But the most important thing is that you keep flexing those brain muscles and I'll see y'all next time.